Display of the Day preparation webinar. Um, as you may know, our, legislative, our annual Legislative Day takes place one week from today, June 7th, at the State House in Trenton. I want to thank you all for registering and being with us today. I'm Nina Renero. I'm the Communications Coordinator for the Network, and I'm joined by Arnold Cullen, Senior Policy Coordinator, and Ben Haygood, Director of Special Projects. Um, this, recorded, this webinar will be recorded, and we will send out the recording as well as the PowerPoint and other materials that will help you prepare for Legislative Day. Expect to see that in your email inboxes sometime early next week. So let's get started here. In this presentation, we're going to cover how to speak with your legislator, the key policy priorities for Legislative Day, and a basic overview of the day. So the reason why we are doing this is because New Jersey residents are struggling to make ends meet and it is hurting our economy. We need to preserve the resources that support the work many of you do to support your communities and strengthen our neighborhoods. I, I need to know it's very important in, for Legislative Day that you know that everybody is going to be assigned to a group. You're not going to have to meet with your legislator by yourself. You will be in groups and each group will be headed up by a team captain who will have all the materials and kind of guide the group throughout the day. You're going to receive a packet with all the information and I need to make we need to let you know that we, while we do have appointments set up, sometimes things happen and an appointment will get moved or canceled. Don't fret. You can, if you see one of your legislators in the hallway, feel free to stop them. And here's an elevator speech, quick one minute to get your point out and um, to hand them the materials, their packets. So now I'm going to kick it off to Arnold to go over the policy priorities. Okay. So welcome everybody. And, and again, let me add my thank you to uh, joining us for our legislative day. Um, for folks that have joined us in the past, thank you for returning. For other folks, um, we'll all have a t-shirt that we'll be giving you, um, maroon. And as we walk through the halls of the state legislature, everybody will be noticing there's the group that's advocating for more affordable homes. So just your presence there uh, next Thursday, we'll be sending a message that people care and want to see New Jersey uh, have more affordable housing opportunities for its residents. So the key policy priorities for the day, I just want to go over. So, and again, you'll have, as Nina said, you'll have all this material sent to you ahead of time and we'll have copies of it when you arrive next Thursday. So you don't have to memorize anything, but the purpose of the, the webinar is just to kind of give you a basic background on what we'll be talking about. So the most important thing here is, is that the governor's budget has taken the money for from the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Those dollars from the realty transfer fee every time a, a home is sold in New Jersey portion of that fee goes to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund that is to be used only for affordable housing. That money has been taken uh, in the governor's budget, $46.5 million that is going to Department of Community uh, Human Services. And so our big message for the day is we need a legislature when they're approving the budget by the end of June to restore those dollars for housing production. Um, in addition, we'll be talking about uh, preventing lead poisoning by making sure that one and two family homes get ex inspected, which does not happen now, and that lead inspection happens when there's a turnover of a rental or a uh, for sale home, that tenants, there's a couple of pieces of legislation we'll see later to provide tenants with the right for a safe, decent home. Emergency assistance is a key issue for people that are homeless to be able to have that safety net they need. And foreclosures continue to be a major issue in New Jersey, so we have a bill there to address that issue. 
I, I want to add that if anybody has a question during this presentation, feel free to type it into the question box and we can answer it. Otherwise, you can also email Arnold after the presentation. Uh, his email address is available on our website. So, um, a lot of the a number of the bills that we are talking about before as our priorities have bipartisan support. This is not Republican or Democratic issue. The issue of emergency assistance, for example, last session passed the Senate unanimously and overwhelmingly in the Senate, but was vetoed by Governor Christie. So um, the the issue of lead lead paint is, is a bipartisan issue. Nobody wants to see children be, being poisoned by lead. And that most of our bills don't affect the state budget. Um, so lead inspections, there's dollars built into that legislation to reimburse the municipalities. It doesn't come from the state budget. Revising the mortgage foreclosure process doesn't cost any money. It doesn't cost any money to provide tenants a safe, decent home. So a lot of legislation, does not, you know, the, the big thing that affects the state budget, obviously, is our big issue, which is making sure we restore those dollars for housing production. So just to reiterate, our, our, our big ask for the day is, is to stop the raid on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Um, as you see, the amount of money that is in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is a very small part of the overall $36.4 billion budget um, that's there. And these are critical dollars to both address the obligation that suburban, ta suburban towns have to create affordable housing opportunities and for urban municipalities that want to see more affordable opportunities in towns that are otherwise getting very expensive. Good morning, everyone. Ben here talking about lead poisoning and some of our focuses on policies um, in the healthy communities arena. Um, if you aren't currently aware, New Jersey is currently using our children as lead detectors. We um, aren't even sure exactly where to send the lead remediators until they literally pop with an elevated blood lead level. So we're really trying to work on this and, and again, stop using our children as, as lead detectors. And two of the pieces of legislation that we're working on to specifically address this um, are helping to close a, a loophole that, are, um, that is currently allowing one in two family homes to not be inspected. So the first one will require municipalities to regularly conduct lead inspections in one and two family rental units. And like Arnold said, this does not need an additional appropriation. So this should be a no-brainer for folks that we're just simply closing a loophole. The intent was always to inspect these homes every time there is um, a rental turnover. And the second one that will then require a lead paint inspection prior to either home sale or rental turnover. And again, we're not asking for much here. We're just asking for our homes to be inspected for lead. Uh, the next the next two bills are dealing with the right for a, a somebody who pays the rent to be able to have a safe, decent home. First one is this issue of what's called tenant blacklisting, which is a what happens is when a tenant complains about not having heat, hot water, bad conditions, and goes to court. Their name is on a list of tenants that have gone to court, and some landlords are using that list of tenants who have appeared in court, regardless of the outcome, to then not rent to those tenants. Uh, so we want to see that made illegal. The second is, is to strengthen the tenant's right to a livable home by allowing a tenant to go to court, talk about what is happening in that court, and then have the judge order appropriate inspections so that we can see is it so that a tenant that has a valid reason for withholding their rent um, and demanding better conditions actually gets a fair shake by the courts. Foreclosure, as I said, is still, New Jersey is still a number one state for foreclosures, while the rest of the nation is actually addressing foreclosures. So the, the, 
one bill that we're focusing on to help prevent foreclosures is one that would require a bank or whoever server, the, the, the entity that's foreclosing, to be able to have to tell the person they're foreclosing on all their options to avoid foreclosure and to have a single point of contact, which is really important so that when somebody's talking to that, that bank, they're not getting the runaround talking to this person today, this person tomorrow. Two bills um, that we also are on our list for the policy of priorities are under emergency assistance. And again, just like the lead bills, these both these bills are no-brainers. They're really just trying to correct certain things um, that really have served to um, make this an unlevel playing field for certain folks. The first one, um, really, in, in a nutshell, um, allows folks to, to restart after seven years. Um, on their emergency assistance benefits that currently it covers the lifetime. So we're allowing them to restart after seven years. Um, and again, this is really key because as we all know, no one really only has one crisis in their lifetime. Emergency assistance is helping these people through crises in their lifetimes and especially in today's world. Um, if they have um, a second incident that requires them to access these funds, um, simply allowing them to redo that after seven years, again, is a no brainer. The second one, um, extends emergency assistance for several individual demographic groups that were taken away during the Christie administration. Some changes um, that Christie enacted uh, removed emergency assistance for specific individuals, specifically caretakers of disabled, dependents, permanently disabled, and over 60 are chronically un unemployable. Um, and this would just simply um, allow those individuals to receive emergency assistance. So here we have the agenda for the day. We're going to get started at 8.30. We're starting that early because, I can't stress this enough, allow yourself plenty of time to get through security. This year, our room, we're going to be in committee room six in the State House Annex. That's on the first floor. The State House Annex, um, they're doing work, construction in the main building. So we're going to be in the annex, and the annex is, if you're facing the state house, it's the building on the right with the fountain in front. So make sure, again, very, very important, make sure to have ID with you. You will not be allowed into the building without ID. So allow yourself plenty of time to go through the process. There's a metal detector. You'll have to put your stuff through the scanner and go in that way. Um, there's also... Um, Limited, there's limited on-street parking, but you can also park in the State House garage. That's first come, first serve. There's also parking at the Lafayette Street garage. I will send all that information in a follow-up email earlier this early next week that contains this power, uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, so, again, if you have any questions regarding the day, please contact Arnold Cohen at acohen at hcdnnj.org or myself or Ben. And with that, we will see you next week, June 7th, at the State House Annex for our 2018 Legislative Day. Thank you again.